Hello, I'm John Frankie, theologian in residence here at Second Presbyterian Church, and this is video number four in our Advent series on spiritual practices. Uh, and today we come to Sabbath. Now, everything we've talked about, centering prayer, Lectio Divina, the daily examine, is, of course, very important um, and helps us connect with God um, and find our being in Jesus and in God's work in the world. And yet, in many ways, uh, Sabbath may be uh, one of the most important of these practices and perhaps, in some ways, the most neglected. Um, all of these practices, uh, when put into uh, regular practice, uh, help us to find peace in ourselves. And I think particularly, at least in my life, that's true of Sabbath. When I set aside a day or a time uh, to just be, to not have an agenda. David's mentioned a number of times Enneagram numbers. I also am a three, and this can be a real challenge. But I found that one of the things that's important, not just with Sabbath, but with all of these practices, is to learn how to be at peace. One of the things that God's kingdom is about is captured in the Hebrew word shalom, uh, which means peace. But it's kind of deep peacefulness that God brings into the world, that God desires for the world. And we are called to be witnesses to God's peace, to be the instruments of God's peace. And yet we will not be the witnesses of peace and the instruments of peace in the world if we are not at peace with ourselves and with God. And Sabbath is a time when we uh, set time aside uh, to be at peace, but also, I think, to realize, and David may talk about this. If he doesn't, then I'm glad I am here. But to realize, uh, and I say this guardedly, but God doesn't need us. The work of God goes on without us. And I have discovered in Sabbath a time not just to be at peace and at rest, but also to learn that Although I am called to participate in God's work in the world with all that I have, uh, God doesn't need me to do that work. And many times that is a challenge for us. We think that we're indispensable. So Sabbath is a context where we learn what it means to rest. I'm so happy that David Bell is with us again for this fourth week in Advent to talk in more detail about this practice of Sabbath. Uh, David is the director of Enneagram Insight uh, here in Indianapolis. Uh, he is uh, an outstanding spiritual teacher who has uh, been with us a number of times here at Second as well as throughout Advent. And it's, I'm grateful to him for being with us and participating in this Advent season as he leads us now through this practice of Sabbath. David. Thank you once again for this opportunity to talk together. And I love that John started with that idea of God not needing us to remember and remind ourselves that God wants us. And God wants us to be in God's presence. And God created for us not only these invitations of, of prayer that have turned into practices like centering prayer and scripture that turns into Lexio Divina, the opportunity to use that practice to connect with God in that way, or prayerfulness of communion with God around examine. But then there's also this particular invitation to Sabbath, which of course is written about over and over again in the scriptures. One of the Ten Commandments, to honor the Sabbath. And for Israel, that was very particular. There were lots of rules around the Sabbath. There were lots of expectations around the Sabbath. And we know that Jesus brought some changes to those ideas around the Sabbath. But as John mentioned, very often, because I think Jesus brought changes in what he said about the Sabbath, it's become a forgotten practice for us as Christians because we think we don't need to do it. Oh, oh, that was when they were under law as 
Jews and one of the Ten Commandments. We're not under law, so we don't have to do the Sabbath. And I think when we tell ourselves that, I wonder, well, I, I don't know if God chuckles or not, but I wonder if God's not thinking to himself, oh, dear friends, my beloved children, you're missing the point. <laughs> it's, it's not that you have to do the Sabbath, you get to. And that admittedly has been a shift for me. I get to Sabbath. Sabbath has become a far more important practice in my life over the last few years. When I heard my spiritual director, Beth Borum, share this idea related to her children. She was recalling an anecdote where someone had asked her and her husband, David, what they wish they had taught their children. All of her kids are, are grown adult children now. She has grandchildren. And she said, above all things, we wish we had taught them to practice Sabbath. And I didn't stand up, but I stood up and took notice. Went home to my wife that day, and we began our conversations around what Sabbath would look like for us in our family. And it took time to grow into it. We don't do it perfectly still. Uh, we, we do it in various ways, even as a family. We, it's something that we want, wonderfully can pursue as a family, and you too can pursue Sabbath as a family. But there's some, some challenges, some differences there, and we are not legalistic with it. That's one of our key ideas. But it's still something we practice and that we pursue. It began more with an afternoon, and then it was, okay, from from church into the afternoon, four o'clock, and then it's church into the afternoon all the way to dinner, and then it's, okay, how about from breakfast all the way to dinner, and then how about maybe the whole day, and sometimes we've done it more where we've started Sabbath Saturday night and taken it to Sunday evening. Other times it's very much from Sunday morning till we go to bed at night on, on Sunday evening. The point about Sabbath is not to be legalistic. The point about Sabbath is to make space in our life to slow down, to be with God, to be with ourselves, to know that God doesn't need us, or that we are not human doings, that we are human beings, to quote that cliche, and to rest. It's been said that you cannot be healthy in your Enneagram style without slowing down. Well, even if you don't know the Enneagram, I would say to that, you cannot be healthy as a human being without slowing down. We're too reactive. We have too much going on. We're, we're too split decisions and, and responses to people that aren't responses. They're just that. They're reactions. Our pace of life is too fast, and frankly, in this country. We heard it with the pandemic. We heard certain people, and particularly certain Enneagram numbers, speaking up about how when life started to slow down in quarantine and stay at home, like, whew, welcome to my pace of life. Four, fives, and nines in the Enneagram were pretty happy about stay at home, not obviously because of the reason, but because of pace of life. They find it hard to keep up with the pace of life. Ones, twos, and sixes in the Enneagram seek to keep pace with life because the three, sevens, and eights were the ones out there setting the pace of life because we're always out into the future setting up what's going to happen. Our pace of life is too fast. In fact, one of the great beauties of Sabbath that was true for the people of God as Israel and that is still true for us today is if you want to live counterculture in our world, practice Sabbath. You want to demonstrate a different way of being in the world and the difference of your God and your God's expectations than as Jews, they took a day off in the week and they didn't work. That was not like any other nation. And it was done to demonstrate the difference of Yahweh, who God was and is to them. And the same, I believe, is true to this day. You practice Sabbath, you will be counterculture, and you will be saying something about who God is and who God invites you and I to be. What an invitation, an invitation to rest. So there's two ideas that we use, at least in our family, when we think about Sabbath. The first comes from 
uh, from Beth and what she shared when we were talking about Sabbath one time, and that's ceasing from responsibility. And the second key idea for me comes from another of my teachers, Joe Stabile, and that is doing what brings you delight. Doing what brings you delight. And I found both these phrases so helpful when I think about Sabbath and resting, because I think they honor God. Ceasing from responsibility is God's invitation to rest, but as John said, God doesn't need me to do everything. Doing what brings me delight in Sabbath is why it's not legalistic. And that's a gift. It's a gift for me, and, and this is where it can be a gift for your families, where you can engage it with your family, where your family will say, really? That's great. I'll tell you, not being on my phone all day on Sunday, my 11-year-old daughter has no problem with that. She's very pleased that I'm not on my phone that I'm not gonna get distracted with an email, that I'm not gonna go off and try and do something productive with work, that she knows that I'm available. If I'm not available, it's because I'm taking a nap. <laughs> or, well, uh, she knows I wanna watch the end of the Cowboys game. I mean, I watch the Colts too, but I am a Cowboys fan first, so. It's just that that is the invitation to cease from responsibility. See, sometimes when I talk about Sabbath with people and they say, well, I don't know if my family would really want to do that, I'm thinking, actually, especially your younger kids, they will be thrilled. Because if Sabbath includes like playing games with your kids, maybe watching a movie with your kids, after having been at church with your children and talked about what they learned in Sunday school and, and what you uh, took from God in your worship service together, and that you had a slower pace for the day, and that you ate sandwiches on paper plates that are uh, recyclable, because that's better for the environment, uh, and you're you don't have to do dishes because so there's not losing time to you doing dishes and you go on family walks or maybe you make your Sabbath when the weather is good the day you go to church and you pack a lunch and you go to a park and you spend all day at the park let me tell you your kids are gonna love Sabbath they're only gonna want more of it they watch us as adults go and go and go can we teach them Sabbath so do what brings you delight and cease from responsibility. I see laundry and I'm able to say, ah, it's the Sabbath. I'm not allowed to do the laundry today. Whew, love it. I do most of the laundry in our house. I tell my kids, you wanna do your laundry? Nope, I do not wanna hear that dryer. I don't even wanna hear it. I wanna hear the washer. So I ask them not to do it. They have to do their laundry on Saturday. Or Monday, mm, sorry about you if you don't have clothes. Does that sound legalistic? Ah. I don't think it's legalistic, might be. It's the idea that we are all invited to cease from responsibility. In our home, it means cell phones go up. They're put away, and the idea is that they're supposed to stay away for the day. Does it happen perfectly? No. Is it different than other days? Yes, it is. It is. In our family, it's, it's the day that my teenagers with their younger sister of elementary age play we. Now, they don't do that during the week. And you'd say, well, that's on Sabbath. Like, well, it brings them delight. And it brings mom and I delight to hear our three kids find something that they enjoy so much together and laughing together and playing together. And our Sabbath includes some practices for us around the table connecting with God, not only being at church in the morning, which is our practice as a family, but then coming home for lunch. And in particular for us, we have a gratitude journal that we've done now for three years and we talk about our gratefuls and our gratitudes for the gifts that God gave us that week and what it is that God has for us. And then most weeks, we also have a particular prayer time that we do to mark the day, not just with ceasing responsibility and doing what brings us delight, but also marking the day to say, this is also a day given to us from God to also include communion with God in particular ways. And that's why we choose Sabbath to be Sunday because we're doing that in our worship service and being with God's people there. And then having these ideas and practice as well. Sabbath is an invitation to slow down. It's an invitation to rest. It's an invitation to be free from all the responsibilities that we so often feel. It takes work. It takes planning, friends. You, it takes remembering. I'm going to guess if you seek to bring Sabbath as a practice into your life, you're going to come one Sunday and you're going to realize, oh, oh, we didn't do laundry yesterday. Oh, nobody's got clean clothes for tomorrow. Okay, well, got to do laundry. 
and you'll just have to do it. Or you'll realize, oh, we don't have this for food for lunches this week for school, or I don't have anything to eat for dinner. I've got to go grocery shopping. It's my only chance. Uh, I should have done it Saturday. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Okay. It's, it's not about legalism, but it does take practice. It does take planning. It does take looking ahead. It does take thinking about and seeing the invitation of God to come to rest. So I want to invite you to, in this Advent season, particularly as we do this in the fourth week and we lead into Christmas, and for many of us, whether we are on our own or with our spouse or our families or friends or roommates, we are going to have a, a lighter schedule with work. Frankly, if we go to our phone on December 26th, the day after Christmas, you're not going to have any emails there for work. If you do, I'm really sorry. That sounds awful. Nobody should be emailing on December 26th for work, but probably some people will. And so maybe you want to try Sabbath that day. Maybe you just simply start with from the time you get from church, when you go to church, until four in the afternoon. And you do something different for lunch where it's not as much work. Maybe the person, if one of you in your home, if you're in a home with, with roommates or you're a family, if one person is the person who always cooks the meals, then maybe that person gets lunch off on Sabbath and the other person is responsible, another person's responsible for lunch. That's a way to do it because they don't normally do lunch. And then in the afternoon, if you're a family or if with, uh, with others, you plan something for the afternoon. If you're on your own, you plan something for the afternoon as a focus for you for your Sabbath time. And you invite yourself to cease from responsibility and do what brings you delight. There's so many ways it can look. The point, dear friends, is it's an invitation to practice something that allows you to slow down, connect with God, connect with yourself, connect with your loved ones, those who are around you, to cease from responsibility, do what brings you delight, and break free from the tyranny of productivity that our culture drives into us all the time that isn't from God, dear friends. For God worked for six days creating, and then God rested. And if it was good enough for God to rest, it really can be good enough for us to rest. So start with a short season of the day. See what you might build, and see how Sabbath might become a practice for you for you and your family this Advent season and beyond.